What's up everyone, Crypto Savvy here. I wanna wish everyone a happy new year and welcome to 2020. We're gonna take a look at Bitcoin and Litecoin and see where it might be headed. We're gonna take a look at more the bearish and the bullish case scenario. I'm also gonna show you a bullish sign I seen in the four hour RSI that I post posted in the Discord this morning. Should be pretty interesting guys. Make sure you stick around for the whole video. We're gonna point some stuff out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and leave your comment down below to get you entered to win a free t-shirt. Um, I will be picking a random comment from a random video throughout the week on Sunday to pick the winner of the crypto t-shirt. Also, there's a free Discord group in the description below the video. Definitely check it out. It's totally free community, guys. And let's get on with the video. All right, guys, as always, I want to remind you, this is not financial advice, trading advice, or investing advice. There's a disclaimer scrolling on the bottom. Make sure you read it. And let's get on with the video. Looking at the news, um, I always like to do this just to see what the sentiment is in the latest news updates. Uh, Bitcoin closes, quarter four in losses, two major catalysts, catalysts for a rally. That seems kind of bullish. Bitcoin price to crash to sub zero, says Zengo CEO, bearish. Bitcoin for big competitive advantage over altcoins, 2020, bullish. It's been rocky times, but Bitcoin rose 9 million percent in this de decade. Um, Bitcoin must gain 13,800 percent in 2020 to stock John Mc McAfee from you know what. Ethereum price action is similar to Bitcoin's at 3,000. China plan Bitcoin killer sparks major concerns, blah, blah, blah. So um, mixed news, a little more bullish than bearish. But let's look at, here's the what I'm going to look at here in a little bit. If you look here in this RSI, I posted this in the Discord this morning. Um, there is what seems to be an inverse head and shoulders on the four-hour RSI, which I think is bullish. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, I want to remind you guys, there's a, Link to my wife's webpage down below, inkyourimage.com. Check it out. Awesome uh, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies. Some stuff's not listed here. You have to hit her up in the contact I asked for, but there's also keychains and whatnot. She can put any logo you want, any crypto, any saying, family picture, whatever on any of this stuff. She does the big glass frames, aluminum, um, or not glass frames, glass pictures, Aluminum signs, all kinds of different stuff. Definitely check it out, guys. That is a hell of a way to support the channel. Looking at the Fear and Greed Index, where it's 37. Uh, yesterday, we we're at 38. So we have dropped one point. Looking at the Bitfinex longs. And as usual, nobody knows what's going on here. Looking at the total between Bitfinex, BitMEX, and Binance, the longs are 62.42%. The shorts are almost 38%. So let's get into Bitcoin on the monthly. Still looking at this formation here with the volume declining rapidly. And we had been talking about this monthly close, which was yesterday. And we did close above the 21 EMA. That is a good sign. If we stay above it, it's really good. And if we can get back above the 13 EMA, which is around, around 70 75 60 right in that area as of right now as of making this video let's go into the weekly this is where it gets interesting we're going to take a look at a longer term time frame here um so we're on the weekly and i have this top trend line drawn off of these two wicks here from our two uh big rallies and then off the bottom here we have a bunch of touches here there's on the weekly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine touches down here. And then we had another touch right here. I mean, if I clone this line, well, first let's take a look at, at the measurements I have here. So what I did was I took the Fibonacci extension from the swing high to the swing low, and we hit right in the 0.618 and between the 0.618 and 0.65, which is a golden pocket, and that was our retracement there. And then I put the Fibonacci retracement from this peak down to the swing low. If we have bottomed here, which I do believe we have, um, again, guys, I could be wrong. Do your own diligence, due diligence and research. But I went from the swing high to the swing low, and the 
Golden Pocket Zone's around the 11,200 area right there. And that would be coming up to touch the top of this again in March, around March 2nd, 2020. Uh, what this could possibly look like, guys, is something like this. You know, we break up through here, finally come up, come back down one more time, and then break. This Getting this very tight. And that would be, if you guys are into Elliott Wave, I'll do the count real quick, and it would just be, this would be A, this would be B, C, D, and E. And after E, we usually break up and out. Now that measured move, if we take the measured move from the top, the longest point of this triangle, the symmetrical triangle, and bring it down to here, bring it up, let's say, and this isn't gonna be exact, guys, but if we were to break out in this area, this is just for longer term, what possibly we could be looking at. So as you can see, and then I took, we're, we come up to the 0.618, and let's do a Fibonacci um, extension, and we'll bring it from the bottom up to the top of the bull run 2017, back down to here, and that gets us up to almost the 0.3618, which was what this ran to back in 2018. Uh, but anyway, that leads us right around the $30,000 area. Could that be our next stop that we're looking for? Could we make it there in 2020? I definitely believe that to be a possibility. Like I said, we may play around in this zone a little bit. Also, what I want to point out is I, I cloned this bottom line. I'm going to put it up top and look at it as a channel. And if you can see, I put it up to the top of there. It would line up right around that 30,000. So could that be, definitely could be a possibility. As you can see, our volume is still declining in here while we're within this wedge. Let me get some of this stuff out of here so we can see a little clearer. And get rid of this. So yeah, could we be headed up to the 11,200 11, range before coming back down one more test and bounce up? That is a good possibility. Let's look at the RSI and let me zoom in a little bit. Looking at the RSI, we've been watching this. If you look at the yellow line, we had a wedge here, which we popped out of right here, came back down, tested for support, got support, and I cloned this bottom line here, brought it up top, and we are getting resistance on that now. Keep in mind, we have this red support line across here. We're back in 2003, or 2014, we capitulated underneath it, broke back above, Came back down, tested for support in around August of 2015, and then never looked back, continued on up from there. And as you can see, the 2018, we broke below the support here. Got, got support down here, came back up, and blew right back through the support line, came back down and touched it this year in November, and we have bounced up. Are we going to bounce out of this channel next? to continue our ride up here. I believe that's what's in store, but we're gonna take a look at the daily. All right, so looking at the daily, we're still in this golden pocket zone, which is in between the 0.618 and the 0.65. We are getting rejected at the 0.618 right now, and that is at right around the 7208 range is where we're sitting. We're also under the the EMAs here, we're getting rejected from the EMAs. And we have this support line down at 70, around 70, 50, 70, 60. Remember, if we drop below that, then we'll be looking at the more bearish scenario. And one of them being the 0.786 right here. And that's a Fibonacci retracement from the swing low to the swing high at our $14,000 mark. And that would be the 0.786 would be around the 5,400. And that would be retesting the bottom of this support line. And if that was to happen, we'd be looking around uh, the end of January to hit down here. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't. But again, I could be wrong. Do your own research. I am just a guy on the internet. So now what is going on here? If we can break back above these EMAs here, it's looking more bullish, and I had talked about that in the beginning of the video uh, where I showed you 
the post I posted this morning with the four hour inverse head and shoulders showing on the RSI. If you guys watch my videos, you know I like my RSI. Looking at the daily RSI, you can see in the yellow, I have this falling channel and in the white, a rising channel here. Does look like we could be coming up to test the top of this again, guys. We'll see what happens here. Um, don't really see much divergence in the one hour, or I mean, I'm sorry, in the daily. So let's go over to the four hour and clean this up a little bit. And as you can see, I got a bunch of targets up here. We'll talk about them and where I get them from. First off, I want to point out, I pointed this out yesterday in a live stream. As you can see here in the RSI, we're making lower lows and up here we're making higher highs. And I've told, told you guys before, I'll tell you again, when you're measuring for um, divergence, do not use the wicks, use the body of the candles. The RSI moves with the body of the candle. Not So for instance, if we came all the way back down here, the RSI would come down. But if it came up before it closed and the body was up here, the RSI follows the body. Not It does not stay down with the wick. Keep that in mind. Let's look at the bearish case first. If we are to break down from here, and as of right now, that would be around 7130 range. If we break that, um, looking back down towards the 7050. If we break the 7050, guys, um, our measured move there would be, let's take, Let's take a measured move. If you can see in red here, I have this symmetrical triangle. And if we just did a measured move of the breakdown of that triangle, let's say we broke down within the next few hours, we could be looking at, actually this would be down a little bit more. If we broke down in the next couple hours, we could be looking at the 6450 range. Um, and then after that, to come all the way down and retest the bottom of this white channel, as you can see, I have a white falling channel here, would be around the 6275 area. But again, it all depends on where it lands. So these can change, but, but this is the measured move down from this triangle. So keep that in mind. Also, we'll look at the bullish case here in a minute, but let's look at, Looking at this, if we did break down from here, guys, um, there's that 0 0.786, which is the 5400. I believe that would be the worst case scenario. I know people are calling for much lower lows, but we talked about it here. I do think this was a double bottom, and I do think this wick here was a stop hunt from the longs that took off here and most likely had their stops down below this wick. So this looks to me like a stop hunt and continuing, we should be continuing up, if I'm correct. Um, also, looking at the RSI, we are in this falling channel here. And like I said, it does look that we have been forming an inverse head and shoulders right here, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Now, if this plays out, which obviously there's no guarantee, but let's put a trend line across here and we'll do a measured move on the RSI where that would supposedly go to. Um, not to say we can't go higher, but that will get our RSI up to somewhere in this range on the RSI, just, just above 50. Um, after that, could we possibly come back down to a retest before continuing up, maybe testing the top of this channel. And if we do, we'll take a look at what that would be in the price action. I believe that would line up right here around the 7350. Let's put it in here. I'm actually going to make that a little bit smaller. So that'd be around the 7350 would be around the 200 EMA there. If we were to break that, I believe we come up to the top of this triangle, which is around the 7433. And if that was to break, I believe that would be right up here at the top of this falling channel. And if that was to break, I believe we're coming up to test the top of this, let me zoom in, the top of this bigger rising channel in red. So if we were to break out here, I would expect us to come up and test this. And that, <coughs> excuse me guys, would most likely, depending on what happens with the RSI, it could do some resetting down here, but that would most likely be testing the top of this falling channel I have here, which is right around, 
around the 7600 range, which is confluent with all the resistance right across here. So let's keep that in mind. But if the 7600 breaks, we have higher targets, and I will show you how I got those. First one being the same thing, measuring this bull or this as a bull flag or a pennant here. Symmetrical triangle, if we were to break up out of that, um, and that would be, you know, within the next day or two, would get us up to around the 8100 as that target, which also lines up with, if you can see these white trend lines I have here as a rising broadening wedge, that would get us up towards the top of the wedge. And the next measured move I have off of that being measuring from this low, right here to this high, looking at this as a bull flag, putting it up to the top where he might break out, and that's around the 86.74. Now the higher target I have here, let me show you real quick <clears throat> where it lines up as. And it lines up to the top of our resistance here on this falling wedge. And I'll show you how I got that measurement, and then we'll go into Litecoin. So if we do continue up from there, and guys, it doesn't mean we get one green candle and shoot straight up to the moon. So that's not what I'm saying. This could take days, possibly weeks. But if we do a measured move of this channel here to where we might break out, and again, the longer it takes to break out, the lower this goes. But let's put it here just for shits and giggles, around 7,700 if we were to break. 8,900 would be the top of this resistance line. And, and we all know what happens if we break that with, you know, if we break that, come back down and test it for support, get support, that could be extremely bullish. We could finally be broken out of this downward trend. We'll see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go into Litecoin. And we're just going to look at the four hour in Litecoin. As you can see down here on the RSI, I had this channel going across here i had the two touches up here and then i cloned this line put it down to the bottom and then i went off of these three touches here and drew this wedge which we fell out of now here's where it gets tricky um do we come back up to this breakout and come back up all the way to the top of this or do we get rejection here come back down and possibly break down here and we'll look at both the bearish and the bullish case and the bearish case would be we got rejected here. We come back and break down through here. Or if we hit this trend line, I believe that lines up with the 39.75, which is the bottom of this rising wedge, also the top of this falling channel. They both meet up right there around 39.75. So that's being the bearish case scenario. That's probably where we're headed. If we go down from here, as you can see, we are kind of getting support with the EMAs here, um, but if they do continue to fall, obviously we're coming down towards the 39.75 area, which is the bottom of this. And if that's to break, guys, <coughs> sorry, um, if that's to break, we would look at measure, measure this rising wedge, which are usually bear rising broadening wedge which is usually bearish so if we were to break down past that 39.75 my next target's right around let me move this up a little bit right around 34.50 range that would also bring this rsi back down into this range here which could show you a measured move of that too let's zoom in a little bit and if we take a measured move of this channel to where it broke down if we were to break down here that gets us back down to our to lining up with all these lines up with these other two lows on the rsi so that's definitely possible that could be a triple bottom in the rsi if this was to happen come down to that 3446 or 3450 that could be the end and then continue up from there if it goes bearish now let's look at the bullish case scenario. If we're able to pop back up past this and retest the top of this channel, I believe that's going to be around the 4470 range. And if we can break up out of the top of this, um, 
let's bring this up to the breakout. That could get us up to as high as the $50 range, which would break this old high back here. But we have this resistance at 49.40. So I'd be looking for a test up there if we break back out of this. But right now it's really a no trade zone until we break one of these, either the support or resistance, and then I would enter a trade there. I will leave a BitMEX, or I'm sorry, a Bybit tutorial up top if you guys want to check it out if you're interested in trading. I do suggest um, they have a test net. I suggest using that before jumping into trading if you're new. Um, play with fake money, and then you know if you feel comfortable and you are ready to trade, then maybe start with a really small amount, go really low leverage, and see if you do well or not. Trading's not for everybody. You can lose a lot of money, but if you do have the patience and learn, you can do very well also. So that's what I'm looking at right now, guys. Kind of a no trade zone. I'm more, I'm, I'm more so a little bullish, especially in the four hour with Bitcoin because of this inverse head and shoulders that I showed you right here. So let's see what happens there. Um, it is turning back a little bit, but it is the beginning of the four hour candle. So a lot of times the first half of the four hour candle will go one direction and then continue on up the other. But it does look like, um, as of looking at the four hour, it does look like we are gonna break here, break up. Let's go into the one hour real quick. Uh, just get a closer look at Bitcoin in the one hour. Maybe see if I see anything different. Get rid of the RSI there. And looking at the one hour, <clears throat> it almost looks like a... Let's put a trend line across here. So it does look like we've broken out of this. Looks like an inverse head and shoulders to me. I took a trend line off the top of this neckline to the head bring it up to where we broke out that would get us around 7320 range that is where it looks like we're headed if we can break this 55 ema and the 200 ema here the 200 ema is around the 7240 so if we're able to break that that would also get us past the 0.618 be looking at the 32 3267 range somewhere in that area so all right guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel i do daily updates every single day you can subscribe by clicking the crypto savvy logo above my head smash the likes leave your comments guys let me know what you think and that also gets you entered to win a free t-shirt have a great day and i'm